Well, the impeachment trial of Donald Trump is dead on arrival. Uh, not only is it obviously unconstitutional, because, you know, I mean, he's not president. You can't impeach someone um, who's not, you can't impeach a president who's not the president anymore. Uh, the word impeachment has a very clear meaning going back hundreds of years in, uh, you know, legal you know, in, in the legal context of not just the United States, but every English speaking country, um, impeachment is just about, you know, removing uh, someone who holds public office. If you've got a private citizen that you're trying to impeach, that just the two things don't go together. Um, but uh, Rand Paul, um, sort of using this point as his basis. Um, decided to make a motion to dismiss the impeachment uh, trial before it has taken place uh, on these grounds. And uh, he got 45 senators to vote along with him to dismiss it. Now, that's not enough to actually stop the trial. The trial is going to go forward. But in doing so, um, he was able to get these Republicans uh, on the record uh, beforehand uh, before the trial even takes place, uh, essentially uh, showing that they will, in fact, vote to acquit Trump. Because if they don't even think that the trial should take place, period, if they think that the trial itself is unconstitutional, then they're definitely not going to vote to convict him. I mean, it's possible, though I doubt it, that some of the people who voted, uh, who or who some of the people who voted to um, uh, not approve um uh, Rand's motion to dismiss here, people who think that the trial should go forward, it's possible that those people after the trial will still vote to acquit Trump. Um, but there seems to be a floor of at least 45 senators uh, who are going to uh, not, definitely not vote to convict him, uh, which means that he's not going to get quote unquote impeached. And so this impeachment trial is not going to have even a, um, even a, uh, uh, even a hint of impeding uh, Trump's future political ambitions. Uh, there was talk that even though this is clearly unconstitutional, what could be done is if they actually impeached him and decided to um, uh, prohibit him from running from office in the future, that while, you know, if Trump challenged that in the Supreme Court, they almost certainly would have to, um, you know, let him run for president. Um, there, there was talk that, well, I guess they could delay it for long enough to where and gum it up in the courts so that Trump wastes a bunch of money and a bunch of time trying to essentially regain his right to run for public office, uh, that it would make any candidacy of his sort of moot and would handicap him, and that this was a sort of a, a speed bump for any potential Trump 2024 uh, election campaign. However, if they're not going to convict him at all, if they're not going to uh, be able to uh, forbid him from holding office in the future, then you know this is this is all at this point uh, a show to I, I guess appease the Democratic base. Now there's been some talk that even if they don't convict him, they're still going to try and um, bar him from holding future office. I don't know how they could do that sort of procedurally within. Uh, the Senate, because all of this is, from what I understand, would be wrapped up in the impeachment proceedings. So this idea that, you know, okay, they could vote to acquit Trump of his impeachable offense and then, you know, bar him from office anyway, I don't, I just, I don't see how they would do that. Um, I don't know. I don't know that there is a procedure in the Senate by which they could do that, because it's just, this just not how things are done. It would be an even more egregious breach of you know, constitutional norms than uh, impeaching someone who's no longer the president. And so I think that means that this will probably be my last, or my, this might be my only video, I don't know if I've talked about it at all, um, uh, about this second impeachment. Uh, those who are longtime subscribers will remember that I, I'm pretty sure I spent almost zero time talking about the first impeachment of Donald Trump and that at the time was because, you know, one, it wasn't over a serious issue and two, there was a Republican Senate. So, you know, it was going to go nowhere. It was all just about grandstanding and I was not interested in that. Um, I was not interested in, in, in show trials. Um, I'm interested 
in you know real things that matter. But uh, what Rand Paul did today, you know, it is something that matters. Um, he gave us a preview of what to expect. Um, he is essentially allowing us now to pretty much ignore this impeachment uh, sham uh, and uh, and just let them go off and, and make do all their their grandstanding because we know now uh, that uh, they're not going to be able to accomplish their goal. There's going to be no long-term effects uh, from these impeachment proceedings. Now, with all this said, I mean they're doing this. We don't even know Donald Trump would run for president again in four years. I mean, um, what would he be like? Seventy-eight? I mean, he'd be as old as old as Joe Biden was when he ran this time. And I mean, I guess. You know, Trump is much more capable than Joe Biden physically, but I mean, still, when you're 78 years old, do you want to go out and campaign for president? I mean, I guess if anybody would, it would be Donald Trump. Frankly, I think that they'd be doing Trump a favor uh, by barring him from future office uh, because it would make a martyr out of him and it would allow him to play, I think, an even stronger role as a kingmaker in the GOP moving forward. And I think that Trump would be uh, potentially um, uh, a much better force for good uh, in in that sort of a, a role um, than he would be as president. Because as president, he was pretty heavily steamrolled by the establishment a lot of the time because he surrounded himself with the establishment, thinking that he could co-opt them. Whereas if Trump is on the outside looking in, um, if he's completely shut out of the political system of the uh, himself, you know, whereas he is not the candidate, um, then the only people who will want to be around Donald Trump are uh, people who are fans of his to begin with, who generally speaking uh, are good people, or I should say at least they're much better people than the John Boltons and the Karl Roves of the world. If Donald Trump is barred from political office and will never himself hold um, direct political power, uh, he, there are not going to be neocons uh, all around him uh, trying to um, uh, feast off of his power. And so that means he'll be getting better advice. He'll be, um, he'll have, a, a, I guess, a clearer mind. He'll have better people influencing him. And he'll be able to uh, essentially uh, pick uh, whoever he wants in a bunch of Republican primaries. And Trump is not always good on that because he's, you know, he's not the deepest thinker in the world. So sometimes uh, he endorses um, he endorses candidates against good people. He endorses bad people against good people. Um, and it's sad when you, to see that happen. But in the cases when he does it right, um, when he endorses somebody um, against a bad guy, he, he can give um, a candidate who otherwise would have a very uphill battle and make them the favorite. Uh, and the, the example of this that's always cited is here in Florida in 2018, uh, Ron DeSantis against Adam Putnam. Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida pretty much because Trump endorsed him with three tweets. That's all it took, and that made Ron DeSantis the governor of Florida. Um, he would have never gotten out of his primary probably uh, without Trump's support. And if you're somebody who uh, is not a big fan of being locked in your house, who's not a big fan of having your business shut down uh, over the virus, then you know, you're know you probably pretty thankful uh, that Trump endorsed Ron DeSantis. But now imagine if Trump is completely outside of politics and he's able to, uh, which he will in 2018, we'll see this because he's not gonna be running for anything in 2018, He's going to be able to completely go against the establishment everywhere and is going to be able to endorse primary challengers uh, to every establishment hack, um, which he was, uh, which he didn't do so much as president. Um, he did it in open primaries, but not so much in, in closed primaries, um, except in a, you know, in a few certain cases. And I can think of at least, you know, two guys in the house who were pretty good um, uh, people who I particularly liked, and I don't like many people in the House ever or the Senate, um, but there were a couple of good guys who were unfortunately offed uh, by uh, so-called Trumpist uh, Republicans. But right now, I don't think that the Trump movement has its ire affixed on, onto good people. I think that they're really angry uh, with the Liz Cheney's of the world with the John Thunes and the Mitch McConnells and the Lindsey Grahams. Now, unfortunately, Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham just won re-election um, and nobody primaried them. But there are plenty 
of bad Republicans and uh, also open primaries uh, that will be uh, that, that Trump will be able to you know tip the scales of moving forward. And uh, you know if he if he were to be barred from holding public office, um, he would just be able to spend the rest of his life doing that um, and not have to worry about making nice with whichever establishment Republicans have to be in, happen to be in office, you know, if he is to become the president again. When Trump uh, was running for re-election this, you know, this past year, he wasn't really in a position to uh, campaign against Mitch McConnell, uh, who was also running for re-election. So all in all, Trump is not going to be impeached and he's not going to be barred from holding future political office. Um, he will be free to run for president in another four years if he wants to. Um, although I, I really do think that you know, that's not even necessarily the best case scenario. So from today on, I doubt I will be talking about this impeachment ever again. Um, it's pretty much settled today, as far as I'm concerned. So with that said, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.